folks, Braddock Goner Games here. Today I want to show you how to just make a countdown timer attached to a progress bar using nothing but Playmaker and NGUI. There'll be no scripting, no C sharp, just a simple countdown timer attached to a progress bar. So let's get started here. So we'll flip over to tutorial. Uh, I've already installed Playmaker and NGUI. I'm not going to show you how to do that. There's plenty of great tutorials out there, much better than mine. But in short, what we're going to need is just click on NGUI. We're going to create a label. That'll be our countdown timer holder. Click over on the prefab toolbar from NGUI and just drag in your progress bar. And that's uh, really the only two items we need there. Click on our label. We're going to create our FSM and we're going to call this timer. And we'll create a second state called reset. Spell that properly. And we're just going to create three variables here. One is going to be our base time. So this is the time that we're going to use to count down from. We're going to create a constant and the ANT. And that's to allow us to reset the timer. So we're going to say five seconds for now. And we'll create one more variable. And that's to go from a float to a string. And that's just so we can put this into the text for our label. So now we'll click on our timer. I'm going to add some actions here. And so the first one is we're going to do a float subtract. So this means we're going to take our base time. We're going to subtract one from it every frame and every second. We're then going to make a convert a float to a string. And so we want to convert our base time to our oop, screwed up here one second back to our variables and make sure I float to the string was actually a string and that our base time is set to 5 to match our constant time. Now we'll go back float to a string uh, format 0.00, .00 just for easy formatting. We'll do that every frame and make sure that that is below. So we do our subtraction first, we convert and we're going to set our property of the text. So if we click on label, we can just easily drag this into here. And we're going to set the property. Uh, we'll scroll down to text. And text string. And we're going to set the value to be our float to string. And we want to do that every frame. So right now, if we hit play on this, we'll get a countdown timer from five. And here you go, counts down, two, one, zero, and it's going to continue to keep going into the negative because we haven't done anything to stop that just yet. So we'll click on Playmaker here and take that off for make things a little easier to see. So now we click back on our label. Uh, we're going to add in a float compare. And what this allows us to do is just when it hits zero, we're going to fire off an action here. So make sure that that's the bottom. So when our base time hits zero, zero tolerance, so when it's either equal, we'll set a new event here called reset, and we'll add in my transition to be a reset, and then on reset we'll add another transition to come back, and that should be finished. So reset, so our base time, if it is equal to zero, we're going to reset it. If it's less than zero, we're going to reset it, and we're going to check this every frame. So now when it hits zero, we're just going to reset. So over here on the reset FSM, we're going to just do a float. Set float value right there. And on the float value, we're going to make base time equal to our constant time. So this is how we are going to reset that every time. And now we're just going to send a quick event back targeting to self. And we're going to finish. So we're going to select our vote variable, then we're going to send it back. So this will allow us every time the countdown timer hits zero, one. It's going to fire that event and now reset our timer. Now at this point we can choose to start using the progress bar inside of this FSM but uh, for sake of clarity what we can do here is move our base time if you right click on it 
and move it to a global variable. Yep, we're sure. Now we can actually kind of go into this control and set up a new FSM while referencing that variable. Makes things a little bit cleaner. Uh, you guys can do this all in one FSM. I prefer to separate the two. So for this one, we're going to add a new FSM. We've got in our control. We can even call this our progress bar. So in our progress bar, we are going to set up a few more variables this time. On our progress bar, we're going to set up a base time divide. Divide, if I can spell that right. And then we are also going to set up a countdown match. Down match and last but not least we're actually going to set down the invert as well percent and all of these are just simple float variables so when we go into our state the first thing we're going to set up uh, we're going to do this backwards at first but uh, it'll make sense here in a second so we want to set a float so the first thing we want to set is we want to set our base time divide to our global of base time. You can see I've got a couple in here from before, but here's our global of base time. You just want to do that once so that we can convert this into a percentage to move the bar back and forth on the progress bar. And you can see it here, the value, you want to be able to move that value there. Secondly, we're going to set the countdown time to match, so we're going to do another float value. And we want the countdown time to match our base time. The reason for this is that we want to make sure that we're not actually dividing by the actual global itself. We want to create a second variable that we can manipulate without actually touching our global variable. And we'll make that happen every frame. Next, we're going to do a divide. So we're going to set, we're just going to do a float divide here. And so the float divide will allow us to, I think we'll just stop, we're going to move this down to the bottom. So our float divide, we want to divide our countdown match by our base time. And we want to do that every frame. And the next thing we want to do is to set the property. So now we want to, the same thing as we did before, we can close this window down, UI slider, pull this into the bottom. We want to set the property. So you have your progress bar, select the property of the value. You want that value to be set to our countdown match. And we want to do that every frame. So now what we've done is we've set up how much we want to divide our time by. We've moved the base time to match countdown time. And then count it down match. Apparently I can't spell still. I'm not going to change that. That's going to bug me. Countdown match, go back into our state, so our countdown match is going to be divided by our base time divide, which will turn it into a decimal value, which will match up with this. So if we hit play, as our timer counts down, so does our bar. Now, the problem is, is I didn't want a bar that wants to go negative, I want a bar that counts up, just like my example. So with a little bit of math, we can do another, so we over here, remember we had our invert value here, invert percent. It's our invert percent, so we're going to go back into our state. We're going to add another set float value, and we'll make sure that this happens at the top, at the very beginning. So we'll move up our set float to the beginning, and we want our invert percent to be 1. Every frame. Now remember, FSM and Playmaker always starts at the top and works its way down. So every time this repeats, it's going to start at the top and works its way down. And then we're going to do another action browser, and we actually want to do a float subtract. And what we want to do is we want to subtract invert percent by our countdown match. So we're always going to be subtracting one from what or this. 1 minus whatever the countdown match is, and we want to bring that down below our divide. So we want to divide that number, then we want to subtract it, 
And last but not least, we now want it to do the invert percent as opposed to the countdown percent. So now when we hit play, you'll see that we have the timer starting and our bar now counts up. Thanks for watching the tutorial. Hope this has helped you guys out. I know it was something I struggled with for a while, but uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.